On Tuesday, tropical storm Blanche gripped Australia, and in Europe we had another storm in the form of Belgium's Eurovision 2017 singer Blanche Blanche. No matter how you say it, she is a force of nature, and she is a contender for Eurovision 2017. We've got to talk about it. Guys, I was not expecting this. You know, she competed on The Voice in Belgium. She did all right. We heard her covers. She had a beautiful voice, but I didn't connect the dots. She's an amazing performer. This song, City Lights, makes me stop in my tracks. When it comes on, it's like time is still. I was in the grocery store looping this. I spent like 30 minutes in the grocery store because I kept listening to this song and it puts me in a trance. I think it's so contemporary. It's a little experimental, so it's even a little bit ahead of the curve in some ways. There's so many electronic songs this year in national selections that are trying to stand out, but this stands out. And it doesn't stand out by screaming, by yelling, by having annoying digi sounds. It progresses in a linear way, and yet it works because of the changing instrumentation. I could talk for hours about this. I'll cut to the chase. This is my number one. I think this is a song that could challenge Italy. Italy is fantastic to me. Fantastic. They're two different flavors. Italy may be more fun. Ellie more arresting. Staging will determine everything. Enough from me. Chris. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so, so happy because I genuinely thought this year was just going to be a cakewalk for Italy. And it's just, this has come along and I kind of thought, oh, they'll do well. Because I mean, they've done, Belgium have kind of got a good foothold recently with Loic and then with mm -hmm. uh, Laura. They had a good thing going, but I thought it's never going to be as good as them. This honestly feels better than both of them. And I never thought that I would think that a Belgian song could be better than Rhythm Inside. Um, it's just so contemporary. It feels like a bit of Lord, a bit of London grammar, but it feels like Blanche. Like she's taken those influences, but she's not ruled by them. It's not a copy like Lavina, maybe with Titanium and all these and Hovig. Um, definitely the right decision sending that song it suits her voice it stands out um the only my, my only problem i have with it is i worry that it's more like a first single it's a great first single to tell me this is who blanche is but that might not translate well as a eurovision winning song it's more like a oh this is like a genuine song it will do well because it's going to do well there's no way this can't do well but i don't know whether it's a winner I think it's definite top 10, probably most definitely top five. Um, but I don't know whether it's a winner. It's kind of for me like Conchita versus the common Linnets, where Italy and Conchita, you know, it's like a classic Eurovision kind of thing. Different styles, but... And then the Linnets and Blanche are kind of not what you'd expect from Eurovision, but are just so good as a pure song. Um, but yeah, I love it. I really love it. It is definitely either my number one or my number two. Yeah. Um, no, it's really funny because when I think back about the video that we made when uh, she was announced uh, to be the artist for Belgium, um, I said to you guys, I said to everyone, I will look like a fool uh, when the song will be announced. Because I said, I will, uh, I don't really like uh, the songs that I've heard from her, like the, the uh, covers that she did and everything. I don't really like that, but I had the same feeling. Uh, with Laura and also the same feeling with Loic. And since I love both of them in the end, I said, oh, I will look like a fool because the song will be perfect, trust me. <laughs> and there I am, looking like a fool again. And I'm so happy that I do look like that. <laughs> I'm so happy about it. I mean, yes, it is really good. And maybe that's a good thing about Belgium. Every single time they send an artist that isn't that known at the moment, that you feel like, hmm, what will that person be like you don't have high expectations at all and because you don't have that and you're like oh yeah Belgium will announce this song yeah whatever um then they come with the biggest surprise ever that's what they're doing like the past few years and it's just perfect and I love it and 
I don't know. I, I heard the song yeah, yesterday evening uh, when it came out, like the and we, we didn't expect it. Um, and I was listening to it and I was just dreaming away. It's um, it's a really special modern song and some people saying that her voice is really monotone. Um, it is, but not in an annoying way. Not that you're falling asleep. You're dreaming, but not falling asleep. And that's so that's what is making it that perfect. And um, I don't I don't know what they will do with the staging, of course. Uh, I hope they will make something great out of it. Because right now, I would definitely say that it is a contender to win. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, she does need a good staging. And um, well, if you look back at the past two years, I mean, maybe Louis can even help her. I hope so. He was amazing with the staging and everything. So maybe he will be the one who's saying like, hey... <laughs> I became four, so I know how to do this, and I will help you with it. Um, but, yeah, I'm just really, really surprised. And you're number one, you're number one or two, and for me it's the same. It's I'm not sure if it will be, it's, if it is my number one, but it's for sure in my top three. I love it. Yeah. And you know what? When you dream, you wake up and you want to remember. <laughs> and when I remember this, I think of her voice, Lana Del Rey, Adele. I was playing it earlier and my husband was like, who is this man? I was like, this is not a man, it's a woman. And then you see her singing and it's magical. I mean that in the friendliest, kindest way. She has a unique voice and I just wanna hear it over and over. Staging wise, if we look at the music video, you can tell they're going for something artistic. They are not gonna do run of the mill universe in the background. They're gonna have something really powerful. That orb in the video, which movie blogger Ed describes as a luminous testicle, it's giving me life. And you know, testicles give people life, so hey, let's not knock it. It is giving me life, and I hope they do something similar with the lights, or even a dramatic cityscape. Do you remember Dami Eam last year, that beautiful cityscape? There's so much you can do with this, and judging from the music video, they will do something with this. Final point, they're in the first half of the first semi-final. That's Finland, Georgia, Portugal, Montenegro, Belgium, Sweden, Albania, Azerbaijan, Australia. And at the moment, this is a standout track to me. Stand out. Mm -hmm. Put her first, put her at the end, doesn't matter. She's going through. Uh, and even though we didn't hear all the songs yet, I don't think there will be another song that will have the same genre. So she will stand out even though we know all the songs. I'm sure about that. Oh, definitely. I I think the, the only thing that I'm ever so slightly worried about is the thing that keeps on going in the back of my head about what we said about her and the fact that a lot of people said she didn't have a lot of charisma on stage. And I know that that's, they've kind of worked with that with the music video. Like mm -hmm. It feels yeah. like she's quite not detached, but it's a, a, like a cold exterior. She just kind of sings it. And I, I don't know whether or not that will come across too well on TV. It works in the music video because it's very arty. Um, so they will need to match the staging to that. I did think a little bit like the glowing ball was something that Dina Garapova had left over <laughs> from 2013. Um, but I think, you know, work with light, very much like Loic as well, when he had that bright white background and the stripes going across. Yeah, I think this, I, I want it to do well. I so want it to do well. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if looking at those odds, um, I know they don't always pre um, uh, predict a winner or something a little bit. Still, I mean, if you're coming from, what was it, 30-something, um, and you're going to the second place at the moment, it's crazy. It shows that everyone is loving that song and that people really think that she could win. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about it. I don't think there was ever um, a song that climbed so, so fast and then to the second spot. That's yeah. didn't happen before. So there is something going on with this song. And if you hear from other people, I didn't really hear like negative comments. Not at all. They all say, yeah, maybe, yeah, about her, about the charisma. But about the song itself, everyone loves it. Everyone. In the video, as Chris pointed out, she is very detached and almost like not moving her mouth and stuff, and it works so well. So on the stage, they could almost do that intimate box setting, kind of like Loreen did, like detach her from everything and just focus on the face. I like, I don't want to say robotic, but 
it works so well because she's like emotionless and a little bit lost and it fits with the song. I'm loving it. I also think on this odds point, you know, she was tied for last with 100 to 1 across all the British betting agencies. And then she shot up to, as you say, number two. And it's interesting, Conchita rose like a phoenix very slowly over the course of many months in the live performance. Whereas Ellie has just shot up there straight away. And, you know, the first live performance is going to be telling because if she does a good mm. first live performance, she's going to stay there. But if it's not solid, she's going to plummet. And I just really hope she nails it. We know she can sing. Her covers are beautiful. And thankfully, she has her cover voice, but now with proper production. So it's the full package. I don't think we can judge it based on like Eurovision in concert or London Eurovision even though, because mm. I think that the staging and the way that they set this in Kiev is going to be the real thing, because you've got a very glossy music video, a very hopefully glossy stage performance and staging, yeah. and maybe intimate, she won't pop as much, but you never know, she might even stun us there and be amazing. Yeah. So if she does, then this could be the winner. Brussels 2018, who'd have thought it? Not me. <laughs> You know, it's so funny. A final question for you guys. My husband was like, this doesn't sound like a Eurovision song. And he said it like it was a bad thing. But I think it's a good thing because we see with yeah. the juries, increasingly, they don't want the typical Eurovision song. So you could see them leaning away from Italy and towards Belgium. The televote could go either way. I, what do you think? Does the fact that this isn't a Eurovision song help it or hurt it? Help it. I think absolutely. Um like you said with Loic, um, that wasn't a typical Eurovision song and he scored really high. True. Last year with France, uh, everyone saying, no, 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 this isn't Eurovision, so it won't do well in Eurovision itself. And if it will do well, that's because of it's, that it's Sweden. No, it was a good song. People vote for it because they like it. And there are, okay, if, I'm, um, if I will ask my friends, for example, sometimes they watch Eurovision with me and they only do it because... It, I love it. They don't like it at all. And when there is a song that is really modern and it's, uh, that is absolutely not a Eurovision song, they're like, hey, wait a second. This is a song that I would vote for because this is what I love. So it's not that there are only Euro uh, Eurovision lovers that are watching it. So I think that it's, yeah, absolutely a good thing. And we are Eurovision lovers and we love it. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've got, I have one friend who loves it and one friend who was like, exactly the same. It's like, it doesn't sound very Eurovision. Like, he thought it was good, but he didn't think it was a Eurovision song. Um, but the Common Linnets did really well. That wasn't typical Eurovision. I think that the jury will really get this because they got Amin Nata, for example. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I can almost see a very similar kind of thing there. Um, and I think that the jury will really get it and they might not get Italy as much, but I think it would be the other way around, maybe on the televote. I can see it being like a, a final two between the two of them in the televote and it'll be a big dramatic thing. Who will get that? It's going to be Ukraine and Russia all over again, <laughs> like with yes. Italy and Belgium. I can already see it now. Um, I, I think it could win. And I think that, in a way, it would be really good if it won because yes. people will experiment mm -hmm. more and send more modern sounding things that you would hear on Spotify mixes. Um, and not in a bad way, like a Latvia where every song sounded the same. Actually, like create an artist and do something with your artist, which they've done with Blanche. And you know what? I dragged out my Christmas sweater because Belgium gave us a gift. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Longueville, you slay. Well, that's <laughs> what we think. What do you think? Is Blanche in the danger zone or is it the other contestants who need to be worried? You can let us know here on Wee Wee Blogs. And make sure to subscribe because if you do that, you will hear everything about Eurovision and everything about Blanche because I'm sure that you love her as much as we do. And like, share, Twitter, Facebook, everything. Just follow <laughs> those lights. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.